Hey, happy Monday. Are you on your ride? What's your thing? Here's how I'm trying to find my thing and stay on my thing. <laughs> I know, it doesn't make any sense yet, does it? It won't later either. <laughs> Good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. It's kind of a podcast for creatives and artist types who are trying to evolve as creatives and artist types. <laughs> Thanks for joining in the discussion this morning. I'm just a dude on a bicycle trying to evolve myself as a filmmaker, as a poet, and as a human being. Thank you so much for letting me ride along with you today. It is a gorgeous, morning out here on the green belt in Boise. A little bit warmer than it's been. Hey, good morning. Well, that's all right, it's summertime, right? It's like mid-August. Oh man, we got all this water going on these days. One of the things I recommend is that if you have a white bike, <laughs> don't ride it through water because it will no longer be white. But man, it looks good when it's clean. Cleaned up the little red bastard for uh, Goat Head Fest a few weeks ago. Looks good. Trying to have some new handlebars on it, going for a different look. Kind of, uh, those other handlebars, as much as I liked the look of them, they weren't super comfortable. I find that if my, uh, if my wrists are, if I'm hanging on to the bike rather than holding on like sideways, like front ways, like more comfortable, less comfortable. You couldn't see that, I guess, huh? So how was your weekend? Looks like we got traffic situation right up here. Hey, good morning, right behind you. Ooh, looks like they're about to put the fences up here, over here. I tell you, those are kind of cool places, but I don't think I'd want to live there. Like literally where a bunch of people hang out all day. It's kind of crazy. Hey, good morning. So we would be turning there to go get coffee, but someone didn't put his coffee thermos in his backpack. So we're not gonna stop at pushing forward this morning. That's the way it goes. Kind of changed up the whole, hey, good morning. Kind of changed up the whole plan for the morning. But that's all right. Got some nice photos of the LRB on the bridge. Man, let's get to it. What is all of this monkey business? <laughs> so last week, I talked about what I was describing originally as professional dissatisfaction, which I knew wasn't really it, which is why I was having a hard time getting at it and really found out, of course, that it was my, I guess it was just my ego kind of getting in the way of, I used to have a certain kind of job with certain responsibilities and I made an intentional decision to go back to being a specialist and hopefully a media specialist that is like using photography and videography, more than just writing. So writing, photography, videography, and uh, my boss is super cool and has let, allowed my position to kind of evolve that direction. There's a couple of us in the communications team and so one of us evolved toward training because she's really, really good at that. And I'm really, really trying hard <laughs> to be better with uh, videography and photography and visual storytelling as well as writing. So my boss kind of Focus one of us one way and one of us the other way. That's been super cool. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. But I always, sometimes, anyway, we talked about that last week. So to continue on this, one of the things that uh, some people have asked, thank you for asking. You can always reach out to me on, uh, I'm Jeff O 
at morningridepodcast.com. Unless you have another email address for me, I've got several. I know it's a it's a mess. <laughs> or you can hit us up on Twitter and Instagram. Uh oh, you know what's coming up. Hey, good morning. Hey, you're right around you. We don't usually get to go around people that way. Passing on the wall. But yeah, you can hit me up on Instagram and Twitter at Morning Ride Pod. I know, it's horrible. It is what it is. So some people did. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Or you can hit us up out on the YouTube channel too. We throw a video up of this. The day after we record them. Audio. Mondays and Thursdays video on Tuesdays and Fridays. Hey, coming around your left here. Hey. One of the things people were asking last week, though, after me talking about, well, how did you know you wanted to go and make a film? It's like it's kind of been a long evolution. I'm not going to get into the whole story, but basically, in Alaska in graduate school, I was uh, noticing that people would uh, kind of fall asleep during poetry readings because they can be very, very painful. Because there's different levels of people's performance or different kinds of poetry that lends itself to performance. Some poems are re- way better if you read them in your head. Generally, what I recommend though, if you're into poetry, is reading it out loud on the page, from the page, read it out loud. All kinds of physical goodness comes out. You get a stronger sense of the rhythms when you're reading it out loud. Don't mouth along. No, I'm not talking about that. (laughs) I know. People say that that's a thing. I don't know. If you love reading, get out and read, man. I keep wondering where the handbrakes are with these (laughs) new handlebars because they're like my mountain bike handlebars. It's like, how am I going to stop? I don't have any brakes. Oh, right. We've got the pedal backwards brake. So when I was in graduate school, I noticed that people were having a hard time paying attention. Hey, good morning. With some of my poems, because they get, some of them were getting long. I was working with uh, longer poem forms, trying to figure that out, because I'd been reading a lot of Allen Ginsberg and some of his longer works, like Kaddish. Man, that poem knocked me over. Read it, and then I found a recording of him doing it. It's got the 60 hertz hum that really pisses me off. I wish someone would uh, take that out and remaster it. I guess I could do that, but that ain't my property. <laughs> and so I started putting like, uh, I started with PowerPoint presentations with just images, like just photographs. So as I was to read the poem, I'd get to a certain point and then, you know, click the next photograph. And so it kind of gave people another entry point into the poem. I mean, the idea was, you know, to put up images that went along with the feeling of the poem more so than the meaning of the poem. I think that's the first time I've been able to say that. That's exactly what I was trying to do. Something atmospheric, something that helped engage on a more on an emotional level with the poem so that the meaning was still coming from the word, so that the poem was still the poem, right? Kind of like Dr. Seuss. The poem's still the poem, but then he illustrates these poems, and, uh, well, and I guess sometimes it helps to see what he thinks is a snorf blad or whatever. (laughs) I never played one of those in band. And eventually I started putting video behind, videos with music, so that just put in that many more layers of atmospheric emotional content to go along with the poems. So as I was reading the poems, the video and music would play. Now that meant that the performance was more or less locked because I had to hit certain points in the music, had to get at a certain point in the poem to be at a certain point in the music. Anyway, I realized then it's like, oh, if I recorded this, then I could publish this or post it along on my website along with the poems. Hey, good morning, coming around your left. 
Hey there. So I kind of realized it's like, oh, these are kind of like short films. And I was also doing video work for the University of Alaska Anchorage very poorly at that time because I was just, I didn't know anything about a camera. Editing wise, I had a, have a decent sense of narrative. So then it was like, man, I want to start making more of these. And this thing was kind of emergent at the time called video poems. And so we were working on those and trying to figure out how to, how to maintain focus on the words and how do you support the words? How do you amplify the feeling again? And so it's really not like a short film at all. It really is like more like how do you illustrate a book in a way that brings more meaning or substance to, the, to what you're reading? How do you use a, a pie chart to say, 60% of people love this. <laughs> you know, sometimes pictures make it easy to illustrate things. And so we were just trying to do that with poetry. I realized I was basically making films. And then the long version of this story, <laughs> I know it's already kind of long, isn't it? The long version of the story is, I've been wanting to make films since I was a kid. I used to take photos of my train set and car set and then I'd put them on slides. Only I never had the money to get them developed as slides, so that project never came to be. But I like recorded a recorded the whole episode or the whole show. I, th I thought I was making little TV shows or something. And then so I've kind of always wanted to experiment with making films. I've been trying to make some short films, but I'm not happy with the story part, the narratives that I come up with, because they're very conventional, and we see a lot of short films along those lines, and I'd just like to figure, a, I'd like to figure another way into it. Whew, it is warming up. By the way, and I've talked about this before, one of the things that I've learned about bicycle commuting in the summertime is that uh, it gets hot and you either one of the things that I've learned oh boy it turns so different man so one of the things I've learned is that uh, keep the hair that grows underneath the clothing trimmed <laughs> I'm trying to be delicate I'm not talking about manscaping or anything like that folks but I'm just talking about the less hair you have the less odor collects when it's hot out now I've also said, I think recently, that you know sometimes when it gets really hot, I change out my underwear when I get to work because well, because it's hot. <laughs> that reminds me of that tune about shaving, about Burma shave. Do you know about Burma shave? My dad reminded me of this when he took his last or one of his recent trips. He likes cruising down Route 66 in a car forever and ever. I think, I think that's my dad's ride. Specifically, <laughs> Route 66. I love it. But he was telling me about these signs and their little poems along the way. So like, there'll be like four or five signs in a row and they're to advertise this shaving cream called Burma Shave, but it'd be like on one little sign and they were all red signs with white lettering. So it'd be like a shave that's real, no cuts to heal. <laughs> Ironic gestures with landscaping saws aside. Okay, that wasn't part of the poem. A shave that's real, so a shave would be on one sign, and then a few feet later that's real, and then a few feet down the, down the road, no cuts to heal. A soothing velvet feel Burma shave. So the idea was that, you know, every 50 to 100 feet, that have another Burma shave sign. And uh, these were really popular in the US from, I guess the first one appeared around 1926, somewhere in Minnesota maybe, through the 
early 60s, mid 60s, something like that. I think Nevada was the only state that didn't have them because <laughs> there was insufficient car travel through Nevada <laughs> during those years. I think it's probably still the same. Hey, thanks, brother. Tom Waits also wrote a great song called Burma Shave, where he uses that idea that you've got all these signs, you know, about shaving, basically, the, the advertisements about Burma Shave, but he imagined that they were signs to a town that didn't exist. So he's uh, got this song, and he's, uh, he's always saying, you know, I guess I'm on my way to Burma Shave, and it's kind of like this town that has all these signs to it, but that it doesn't exist. It's a beautiful song. Check that song out, man. I'll put that in the I'll put that in the episode notes. Anyway, this did not get where we thought we would. <laughs> what is going on with, with the host of this podcast? My gosh. Anyway, I decided I wanted to try making a film. I went to this uh, workshop with Diane Bell and Chris Byrne. They had just made a film called Obsolidia that I've talked about. It's a fun summer film. I recommend you go check that out. I'll put that in the, the show notes too. Hey folks, that's gonna be it for today. <laughs> I know, I feel like I've let you down, I'm so sorry. Hey, but if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle, whatever your bicycle is, man. You know, like I say, I'm working to evolve as a filmmaker. I don't know what I'm doing. It's, it literally is scary. It, uh, um, yesterday I had a kind of meltdown, Jennifer helped me through it. Thanks Jennifer, I really appreciate you talking with me about these projects, because I don't know what I'm doing. They can be very intimidating. Uh oh, it's Mr. Mart. Good morning. So, folks, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle, whatever your bicycle is. Hope you have a chance to get out on your ride today. Folks, it's the only one we got. <laughs> Happy Monday. Can't wait to ride with you on Thursday.